on our coastline, one of the more popular, better eating fish would be our bronze bream. Um, we get them all the way from Zululand all the way down the Cape. It is one of the more preferred light tackle edible fish that one could fish for and they are great fun. You do not have to throw far for them. They actually feed very, very close in the, and around the rocks. They are by far one of the better fish as far as all weather edible fish goes. You can catch them in rough seas, you can catch them in flat calm seas. What we're going to do today is basically show you the trace that I use. Um, it's a combination of a helicopter rig with a kickback hook system, if I can put it that way. You can get the ready-made um, saltwater sports traces available from the Kingfisher. It's nothing, nothing wrong with it at all. They work extremely well, they're quick and easy to use. I'm just going to show you a more comprehensive trace. For that, we are going to require Siglon FC fluorocarbon, about 19 kilos, Maxima Ultra Green, 7 kilos, Chocker Hammer, a little earbud, just the tubing part of it, our floater bait um, in orange or red, little power swivel size 6, you can go lighter if you want, I don't particularly like that because you do get bigger fish. Um, the smaller swivel does tend to cut the line, so you're going to have to fight the fish a lot um, more carefully. Our mustard chinu hook, and I'm going to go through the hook, why this hook is so important. Cotton and knife. Start off with the hook. The mustard chinu is offset. So it turns nicely in the fish's mouth. It has got a slight kink to the back. So when we snell this hook, the line actually sits on it at exactly 90 degrees. It actually causes a, a circle hook effect, if I can call it that. So to do that, I'm gonna take my seven kilo Maxima Ultra Green. I'm just going to use a quick knot that I use for snelling, which is basically one, two, three times over the back, through the R, and what I do is I just use my fingers here and just keep on pulling it down until the nylon goes over the top. Pull tight, take the end of the nylon through the back R. Then just slide it down to where it should be and then pull the knot completely tight. Let me just cut it off quickly for you. And there is the hook snelled. Simple as that. The next little trick, take the earbud, just cut a small little section off of it. You don't need too much of it. The earbud has got a hole through it so we're just going to Slide that on. To the end. I'm going to take one of my little orange foam beads, uh, flotation beads. There it is there. Stick it through. Slide that on. And then what we do is we take a little toothpick. And we stick the toothpick in there. I'm going to do that later on. We just stick the toothpick in there just to help with the movement. You must leave a little bit of nylon just so that there's more movement in the actual bait. Okay, so there is my snooting done. The main part with our fluorocarbon FC. I'm gonna make about a meter and a half in length. Easiest way is halfway down. I'm going to make a, a knot, a figure of eight, but I'm wrapping it three times. So one, two, 
three times. There's my figure of eight, I'm just going to lubricate. Pull together very slowly until it's tight. I'm then going to use a clear bead. Unfortunately for demonstration purposes I'm going to use a little orange one, but a clear bead definitely works a lot better. And the reason being you can't see it. It makes it more um, invisible to the bronze beam and bronze beam are very good as far as our sight goes. Um, when they're coming along feeding on the, the red grass and the weed that they actually feed along, um, you don't want something standing out and going to them, oh there's something wrong here. Next I'm going to take a little swivel. Slide the swivel on. To where the bead is, grab another little bead on the opposite side, slide him down. Now it becomes a little bit tricky now. Again, I'm going to do that same granny knot, figure of eight, three times over. Lubricate, and now I use my fingers to move it down as close as I can to that swivel. Pull tight, and as you can see, the swivel moves around very nicely. Nothing restricting that at all. Okay, what I'm going to do now is use a quarter anti tangle sleeve, um, preferably the gravel color, which is a lighter color. You can get darker ones if you're fishing around uh, that, like I say, you're looking when you're looking for the bream, you're looking for, yeah, on our coastline, that red weed. What I'm doing is I'm sliding the line through and down my anti-tangle free sleeve, taking my main line. Tying my figure of eight. Cutting that off, sliding my anti tangle free sleeve down onto the actual swivel itself. And it just hides the actual color of the swivel. So if I can put it down on the board. Now remember that that would be a clear bead, which is almost translucent in the water. And this totally disappears in the water as well. You just got that little bit of black sticking out from the swivel. Now what that does to the whole trace is, if I can do this, you can do what you want and it hardly ever tangles. So when it's in the rough water moving around, it doesn't tangle. And that's what you're trying to do. You don't want your trace to actually tie knots in itself. Um, for instance, like that there. You don't want it to tie a knot in itself. So you're tussling your bronze beam and all of a sudden, oops, you come off and you've only got that. And you think, oh, you've been cut off. Meantime, you haven't been cut off. Your, knot, your line has actually tangled itself. You can use heavier line to prevent that. But I find lighter you fish, the more bites you to actually get. And I just want to show you this little kickback system that we've got. Once we've got our prawn on here, that little part there actually kicks See how the hook actually moves back? Simple as that. If I put it down. Okay. So when the fish has got it in his mouth and you actually pull, and you pull against the actual float, that will go, oops, into the fish's mouth. Okay. Let's just put the sinker on. What we normally use Bell sinker, four ounce, three ounce, five ounces, up to you, as long as you can throw it. I prefer to put it in a vise and actually just squeeze it down a bit. What it does is prevents the actual um, sinker from rolling too much. So it actually sits quite flat on the sand and it actually drags more than roll. When you do retrieve it, the shape of it just brings it straight to the surface. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to tie it on.
it. Just cut it off nice and neatly. Now, because this is on one long level of straight nylon and I put two knots in it, the best way to actually prevent you from losing your trace if you do get stuck is to put a couple of little half hitches basically in it. So just another two or three, there we go, two, three of them. The single half hitch is a lot weaker than that figure of eight three times around. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying here? Those little half hitches will break way before that knot over there breaks. So whenever you get stuck, you pull, and you're gonna lose your sinker part over here, your snooting part over here. Okay, guys, you can test it, you can do it at home. It, believe me, it does work. That there is now the finished and completed bronze beam trace that I use. Um, as you can see, it's got the helicopter rig. I'll just quickly do that so you can see helicopter rig. It's got that little kickback system which will kick back if you pull on the actual trace itself. You can see how that hook little kicks back there on it. Okay. That is now the completed bronze beam trace that I use. Okay.